Uh, Mrs. Cousy, go ahead, please. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I'm going to go back, uh, Monsieur Giroux, um, following a line of questioning my colleague had around the deficit spending. Um, this year's spending has increased to $493.7 billion, which is an increase of $50.4 billion. Uh, you state in your economic outlook that the deficit is projected to resume its downward trajectory if there are no, are no new measures and existing measures sunset. But as I indicated in my first round, this is not consistent with the government's spending patterns. Based on this government's record and the fact that new measures are already being introduced, do you expect this to be accurate? So my colleague had asked you what is the area of uh, spending which is of most concerning to you. Do you believe that... Um, your the the deficit projected projected to resume its downward trajectory um, is is possible is is accurate based upon your comments. Um, when when we release our economic and fiscal outlook and we project the deficit going forward, it's assuming no new fiscal measures uh, because that would be very difficult to include potential measures what would we include and in how much new spending or tax measures would we assume to be introduced. So that's why these are status quo based on what we know at the time that we put this one to bed, the economic and fiscal outlook. However, what we have seen in the past is whenever the government tables an economic a budget or a fall statement, the track for spending tends to go upwards which is a policy choice. So do I, am I certain that the fiscal track we released in the fiscal outlook will be the one that materializes? I don't think it will happen because the government will introduce new measures, which is why governments get elected. Uh, but... Historically, we're, we'll change that as the conservative government. But The government has continue. also indicated that or the Minister of Finance rather indicated that she wants the deficit in 26-27 to be at most 1% of GDP. And by our estimate, status quo would suggest it will be at 0.8% of GDP. So that suggests there's not that much room for maneuvering in that fiscal year if the government wants to maintain 1%. Um, the deficit at 1% of GDP in 2026-27 without increasing taxes. Right. And, of course, we're looking at the implementation of lofty programs such as the dental program, the proposed uh, pharmacare on which the current government's power hinges, and, of course, the failed child care uh, system which they've tried to implement. Um, going back to my uh, colleague, uh, Mr. Genesis, uh, comments about the IT middlemen, um, we know that there's been a reduction of 49 full-time equivalents in the procurement department at a time when we are trying to uh, eliminate the middlemen due to the incredible bloated costs we see with the Arrive Scam scandal. Uh, but these 49 positions are a result of these uh, positions not being filled when they become vacant. Um, is, is this a trend that's occurring in other departments and agencies as, as well that you're seeing? Um, no. Uh, so I'm not aware of that particular instance of a reduction in FTEs. But what we've seen over time is that the number of FTEs has, in fact, increased and personnel spending has also increased. So there are obviously isolated cases of reductions in FTEs in specific programs or sectors, but overall the size of the public service is consistently, has consistently increased over time. Right, and to that point, um, spending on public service personnel has increased to 67.4 billion, which is up from the 63.3 billion spent last year. Are you aware if that increase is due to staffing levels or to salary increases? It's a combination of both, uh, both an increase in the number of FTEs. And last numbers I saw, uh, there was an increase of, I think, 18,000 to 438,000 FTEs in the public service, but also an increase in salary or remuneration costs per FTE. And the last number I saw was 125,000 and a few hundred dollars 
in personal costs per employee, per full-time equivalent. Thank you very much.